I have waited more than a year to be able to release this video and these photos. In this video, I'll take you on a journey through the Danish summer nights to photograph the most beautiful nightly display we can encounter on these latitudes. Noctilucent clouds, also known as night shining clouds or NLCs for short. This video is a titan of a YouTube video and the amount of time, data and patience I've used to create it is completely disproportionate to how well I think it'll do. I'll show some of my all-time favorite night photos. I'll talk about the concepts, the settings and show some mesmerizing time lapses. I hope you will enjoy this sensory night landscape photography experience. So we've come out here in the middle of a beautiful summer's night and as you can see it's actually quite bright out here and that's because we are in the part of the year where we call it the bright nights. So we have like you know we have three types of blue hour and the sun actually only dips to about 8 degrees ish, 6 degrees ish underneath the horizon at this time of year. So that obviously means that it's bright basically all night. And as you can also see, we have gorgeous noctilucent clouds that just lights up here in the horizon. They were a little bit better earlier, took up more of the sky, but I must say that uh, it's actually pretty good right now. So the idea for this picture is to place Sophie on this mount here in the background and then use a longer focal length than the one I'm using here to zoom in and get her as a silhouette in the foreground and then the clouds in the background. Should be fairly simple. I love this photo as it was my first photo of the noctilucent clouds I've got as a professional photographer and it turned out exactly as I wanted it to. It is simple with a good perspective compression and it really gives a good view of the fascinating shapes that noctilucent clouds can deliver. On these nights I was originally out to photograph the 2020 comet Neowise, so this following clip should be seen in that context. No matter what I'm photographing, I try to have some kind of concept that makes sense and is a bit more than what you'll just snapshot with a phone. We went to a big dolmen I had photographed a few nights earlier where I wanted to incorporate Comet Neowise above it. However, just as a few nights earlier, on this night I also got a rather strong display of noctilucent clouds. Actually, the strongest display of noctilucent clouds I have ever seen and they obviously obscured the view of the comet. I really want to photograph that comet <laughs> above this dolmen, which just looks so, so good. But I have so many noct noctilucent clouds that, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure this is going to happen. Um, the scene in itself is super pretty because the clouds are really, really, really pretty. What I've done is that I've actually been out and around the field that I talked about to see if I could get another perspective, but I didn't really like it, as you can see on this time lapse here. So I've come back to the road and simply just stand in the exact same position as I was in two nights ago and I simply just accept that the comet will be small in this photo. We have taken my headlamp and we've placed it underneath the dolmen so it gets lit up from underneath and it looks just so cool when you have the noctilucent clouds uh, behind it also. So in and of itself the shot actually looks really really nice even without the comet. The concept I had in mind for this location was to have Sophie sit on the dolmen and enjoy the sight of the comet in the night sky. She is actually quite small compared to the stone, but it looks as if she's like an elf or an elf or what we call a nisse in Danish, who have come out from underneath the dolmen and sits up there and just enjoys the night. 
and and right now i'm simply just shooting through here shooting all the time just to yeah see what happens full of noctilucent clouds and i also have some uh, foreground clouds and i have the comet the comet is so tiny <laughs> you can hardly see it uh, so honestly I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out but uh, yeah well at least i got the shot <laughs> so, um, yeah, on one, on one hand I'm super happy, on the other hand I'm, I'm a little bit like, you know, tragicomic. I have absolutely no clue how this will turn out. But yeah, I'm just shooting through here and, and then I will choose the one that I think is the best. And I just want to acknowledge Sophie's dedication, who sat in her yoga position for more than an hour while I was photographing the noctilucent clouds and trying to get a photo with the comet. Even though I was disappointed by the photos I got of the comet as you basically couldn't see it, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And I got some of the most incredible photos of noctilucent clouds I have personally ever seen and I've waited about a year to release them. So enjoy. The shapes of noctilucent clouds are, as mentioned, fascinating and when you time-lapse them you can really see their beautiful movement as mesmerizing waves on the night sky. Before I show what I've caught this year and talk more about the settings, if you so far enjoy this video, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. Anything goes, what do you plan for dinner tonight, or you can also just share which one of the photos you like the best in this video. If you want to learn more about how I compose my photos, I also have my ebooks available down in the comments. They are all about composition in landscape photography, they have minimal text and tons of photos as examples as to get to the point fast. 
If you're in doubt whether these ebooks are for you, you can try out the free light versions first. So here we are, a year later. It is summer, and as of making this video, we have so far had some great opportunities for photographing Noctilus and clouds. Well, at least for those of us where the lower cloud cover does not obscure the view. So it's literally in the middle of the night. It's about 1 a.m. on the 24th of June, which means this is the shortest night of the year here in Denmark. As you know from the video title, I'm out trying to find some Noctilucent clouds. There were a little bit, there was actually a pretty good display in the beginning of the night and I got a little bit of it on, on the time lapse. I didn't get the big one which were actually straight above me which were kind of cool. Now I have a little bit out here in the horizon that I've tried to time lapse over the past hour. What I want is I want to have a boat in the foreground and a kind of a reflection ish in the water. The only problem is that it is just so windy these days, so even though we have clear nights, there's a little bit too much wind, so I do get a little bit too many ripples on the water, and that is, yeah, <laughs> too bad. The display of Noctilucent clouds are really good out here in the background, and the only low clouds that are actually here <laughs> in the sky are of course right in front of the Noctilucent clouds. So I will stay for an hour more. Hopefully these clouds will go away. It does look a little bit as if they're moving away. You never know, but it does look to go in the right direction. And then I can get a really good shot of the Noctilucent clouds because they're fairly strong tonight, and that's nice. So it's about 2 a.m. right now, and I just have the most glorious Noctilucent clouds waves here in the sky. The clouds moved away. The full moon is even up, so it can even help lighting me up. I was shooting a little bit further over there by some other boats, so I've come over here now. I have taken a time lapse of this boat with the camera I'm filming with right now. And then I wanted to also have a few photos with my main camera. So I also have some photos and not just time lapse video. Right now it's also time lapsing, just so I can talk with you while it's working. I've been playing a little bit around with the settings and it seems like an aperture of f7.1, f8-ish, ISO 1600, maybe a little bit lower, and then a shutter speed of 5 to 8 seconds seems to work quite nicely. It is surprisingly bright because I can actually, yeah, orientate myself all, all around. So that is not really a huge problem. And that is why I can shoot with a fairly closed down aperture so that I'm sure that I get both the foreground boats here in focus and I'm also getting the background sky in focus. But right now, wow, this display of Noctilucent clouds is just perfect. This right here was what I hoped for. I could do without the clouds down by the horizon, but yeah, beggars can't be choosers. This here is exactly what I wanted and it is absolutely gorgeous.
So it is now like 3 a.m. in the morning and I just cannot believe that this actually worked out. I was a bit skeptic first in the evening, but I gotta admit, <laughs> it was exactly what I wanted. Or exactly something like it. <sighs> Dr. Lewis and Clouds, wow. <laughs> Seriously, I, I almost, no, no, I couldn't have asked for more. Yes. So it's about 1 a.m. and I think I got like six hours of sleep tops <laughs> from last night. And there's Noctilus and Clouds one more time. Actually there's been Noctilus and Clouds for the past 14 days, but I've had a lot of other things to do. So I've just had like here two nights in a row where I could go out and photograph them and I went to one of my favorite locations close to home, which is this lone tree up here in the background. You probably can't see it, it's blurry and out of focus. I'm time-lapsing yet again, photographing like the entire scene. I'm also trying to zoom a little bit in. Right now I'm filming with my 20mm f1.8, but I'm using my 24-205. f4 is actually more than sufficient when it comes to photographing Noctilus and clouds. Tonight the display is rather strong. So I'm shooting with an ISO at around 800, maybe up to uh, 1600. And then I can uh, have a aperture of a four, obviously wide open. And that gives me a shutter speed of one to two seconds. I try to keep it as low as possible because I'm photographing a tree and there is a little bit of wind, which means that the leaves are moving. So I'm trying to, yeah, I'm just hammering off 10 to 20 shots. And then I'm just taking the one where the leaves are the, the most silent or, yeah, they don't get blurred by the wind. And uh, yeah, so that's my approach this evening. Moving a little bit back and forward on this field here. It's just full of grass, so I'm not like walking on anything. <laughs> uh, a little bit back and forward on this field, trying to find different compositions, but I am fairly fixated to like the angle where the noxilusion clouds are behind the tree. There's also another small display of noxilusion clouds over here that I started out trying to photograph and angle myself behind, but it was a little bit hard because I would have to go out into a field and I prefer not to do that. So. Yeah, two displays of Noxilus and Clouds. Another absolutely gorgeous night. Oh yeah, one last thing with the settings. I am actually uh, bracketing, uh, manually bracketing my photos because I want to make sure that I also get some information in the foreground grass here in front of the tree instead of just having the tree completely silhouetted. So yeah, so I try to capture the full dynamic range of the Noxilus and Clouds and the foreground grass and the tree. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful phenomenon up here in Denmark on a summer's night. It's not the auroras, but Noxilus and Clouds definitely have, have their own thing, for sure.
haven't used a whole lot of editing techniques to finish these photos besides controlling the tones and colors using luminosity masks, blending the different exposures using luminosity masks, focus stacking, denoising and sharpening. And of course, cleaning up the photos for debris and a few editing artifacts that usually occur around high contrast edges. If you want to learn how I do my editing and how I approach it, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. I've built up the course progressively, making sure it is easy to get started for beginners and throughout the course I up the techniques to a harder and harder level without making it unnecessarily complicated. There is a link in the description of the video and a coupon code to save some dollars. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, I would highly appreciate a like, let me know which one of the many photos you like the best, and remember to check out the links in the description and get out and take some photos of some noctilucent clouds.